I know you guys love a Nordhaven and I don't blame you for that, they're fantastic. And today I have for you a Nordhaven 63. We're out here in Florida at the Full Auto Boat Show and this is a great opportunity to give you a full tour of this one. We're going to every area, we're going to the mechanical areas, the engine space, the lazarette, we're going into the crew areas, the deck areas, of course, the cabin and the guest areas, and we're going to cover the entire boat. But these yachts, as I'm sure you know, are all about long distance, serious offshore cruising. They are a really serious yacht. In fact, the owner of this one, typically they'll go out on passages that will be maybe six or seven days at a time. And this boat is absolutely equipped to do exactly that. So we're going to enter here. We've got the bathing platform on the back, as you can see. We've got the door here. You're seeing the build quality before you can get on board. They're, they're so substantial, these. They really are. We're going to do all of the deck areas, as I mentioned, but we're going to head on inside, first of all. We've got fridge in here. There's a barbecue. I think I'm right in saying I don't want to disturb the stuff too much, but yeah, there we go, barbecue underneath there. And we've got the sink there as well. Now, you can have seating a little bit like that one over there has got out here. This owner has chosen to keep this open because they like to use this for a bit of fishing. In fact, that's why you see rod holders about the place like this. So that's owner specification. A lot of the stuff you'll see is owner specification. This is run uh, with a family. So um, they've got young children and the boat is set up very much with that in mind, as you'll see as we go on round. So this is into the interior. This, of course, is the main saloon. And um, <laughs> talking of family, the boat originally would have had a TV that pops up from here. What they've done is fitted a larger TV. Obviously, that wouldn't retract, so that's permanently mounted on there. And then the area that the TV was in is used for games consoles and that sort of thing. So movie nights, games nights, that can all be accommodated. We've got seating around here. You've got a leaf in the centre that you can take out if you want to. And there's storage in behind all of these as well. A lot of storage on this boat because, again, you're down to that fact that it is designed very much with serious cruising in mind and in fact you can see that as well here at the galley this is really nice all being on the main deck together it just links these areas through beautifully and that just makes that a really lovely place to be we've got trash compactor on here again if you're out at sea for days at a time that is extraordinarily useful we've got the big sinks here we've got the dishwasher the cooking the induction hob this one's also had upgraded refrigeration. The standard boat would have had refrigeration just on this side. This one's been doubled up. So you've got fridges and freezers, a lot of places to put things away. Now we've got routes down and up. We're gonna do both of those. There's a side door there as well. I'll show you the outside of that as we go around. But I'll take you forward first of all. And what I think I'll do is take you right through here to the bow and then we'll work our way back. Again, there's been a few modifications in here. If we go right up to this forward cabin, for example, this is the perfect example. Because they have young children and they expect, you know, slumber parties and that kind of thing, they've actually fitted these cot berths here. So these can open up <laughs> if I push the little button first. There we go. And you can see how these can come out. And they come out and hook onto these and come across. So with young kids, it just allows you to double up the capacity of this cabin if it's sleepover time. Beds on both sides, obviously, similar deal over here. You've got the opening hatches up above, but what's actually really interesting, as ever with Nordhaven, is what's down below. So I'm gonna close that one over, get myself around here, lift this one up and give you a little look. So if we step down here, we've got these little steps to help us do this. The light is on a timer. In fact, I was down here about 10 minutes ago, which is why the light is still on, because what you do with this is you can spin this little fella here. There we go, we're actually on 40 minutes now. We've probably overspun that a little bit. Um, but this is an engineering area. So bow thruster is here. Some of the plumbing is here. Other things we've got here is water makers, but being a serious Nordhaven, of course, there's two of them so that you have redundancy. If a water maker goes out, you're not stuck for making water. You have a second one, and the same is true of the water pumps. They're backed up, so you've got that redundancy again. You have a problem with one, it doesn't matter. You've got the other one still to operate. Hot water is in here as well. There's the boiler for that. And you can see all the various seacocks and manifolds and other kind of stuff, all very neatly installed. It is all very Nordhaven. Okay, we'll come out of here. This is going to be slightly tricky holding a GoPro, but I've no doubt we'll manage. Yeah, here we go. Drop that one back down. And 
then we'll spin on around and head back. So that light will turn itself off once that timer reaches the end. There we go, that clips back like so. If we come back a bit further, day heads is here. And this is what this forward cabin would use. We've got the separate shower in here as well, of course. And then we've got the basin, a bit of storage and the loo. And if we come back a bit further, now normally this is a pantry. On this boat, this was set up as a third cabin. So again, it's that kind of, you know, kids sleepover type situation. They just wanted a load of space so that when we've got friends and family on board, there's places for everybody. So again, it's how the boat is specified when it is initially built. And then owner's cabin is over on this side. So this, of course, big devil bed. Some lovely storage about the place. So hanging locker in there, for example. We've got drawers down here, drawers by the bed. AV equipment in here, really nice. And there's a big hatch as well overhead. So light and air, you can open that if you want to. And this one is ensuite. So if we close the cabin door over, We'll find that in here. So that is exclusive, of course, for this cabin. Separate shower in through here. Toilet just here. Mirror wave just here. There we go. That's that one. Let's keep going. Plenty to show you on here. There always is a Nord Hovens. They're great boats to look around. So I think we've covered this Ford area. You'll see access traps everywhere. This is all about getting to engineering spaces. It's all about practical detailing, the ability to keep the boat running, maintain her properly, and so forth. Talking of which, this is all the distribution panel here. So all the two, uh, sorry, all the 24 volt stuff is here, all on circuit breakers. 240 volt stuff is down here. And then 120 volt stuff is here. And 240 volt again. And the main battery switches, all that kind of stuff, all easy to get at right there all right let's come back a little bit further we're going to go down now see some more engineering spaces we come down here this is a utility room basically so what you've got here is uh, laundry facilities they're down here washer and dryer a load more storage down underneath so extra clothing extra bedding whatever else you want to keep in there there's a freezer down here, so that's supplementing the cold storage that we saw up in the galley. Also down here, there's another bed. It's like an overflow crew cabin, if you like. It's not something that normally gets used, but if you did want to take an extra person, then of course this is an area that could be used for that. And underneath there is a stainless steel, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a, uh, a workbench underneath there, so that can be used, as I say, as it is a utility area, that can be used for that if you wish to little sink in here as well and then we come into <laughs> the serious business of business so this is a displacement cruiser it's not a fast boat it's not intended to be it's a distance boat so this engine is 325 horsepower and some people say in the comments when I film an auto and they say oh I put an engine three times as big and go faster you can't a displacement boat has a maximum displacement speed once it reaches that speed that's it you're all out no matter how much more power you put in it won't go any faster to do that you need a planing boat and planing boats of course are less efficient at low speed so the whole point of this is to be maximum efficiency at low speed and the engine they put in is the engine that's big enough to take it up to that displacement speed with a bit in reserve and then you're done and that displacement speed on this boat is about ten and a half knots and you would cruise at about eight typically but the flip side of that is the range because it's a displacement hull it's the most efficient at slipping through the water and it's giving you at that sort of speed about 3,000 miles of range so that's the big news with this this is a John Deere it's a 1690 AFM 75 if I remember rightly it's 325 horsepower as I say for a, a 63 foot boat if you're used to you know big planing princesses and things that doesn't sound a lot but it is absolutely more than sufficient for this you could double that power wouldn't make a jot of difference it's a single engine it's spinning a five bladed propeller now again we talk about redundancy if that went wrong if all failed there's a wing engine over here so this is another John Deere engine it's a smaller one it's 125 horsepower that's going to give the boat about five knots and so that really is you sort of get you home what's interesting about this is everything everything is totally separate so it has its own prop shaft with a feathering prop 
what that means is when it's underway with the main engine it, it folds flat when you're running this engine it opens up centrifugal force opens the propeller up and then you've got drive from that but more than that this has its own fuel supply it has its own engine controls and whilst the engine controls on this one are electronic as they tend to be with modern engines on this they are mechanical cables so even in the event of a total electrical failure the cable controls will still operate this engine and that that is backup there's another thing this engine does actually it's a, got a power takeoff there's a power takeoff on the main engine for running things like the uh, thrusters and the anchor winch and that sort of stuff but inevitably when you're running at very low speed when you're maneuvering the engine's just ticking over you don't have as much hydraulic pressure and that's the time when you need it most when you're in harbour you want to get those bow and stern thrusters spinning properly what you can do is run them from this engine build the revs up on this keep it in neutral and that means you've got full pressure at all times We've got generator in here. Got a feeling that's a 20 kilowatt, I might be wrong. There's the exhaust system going out. And if we come back here, this is taking us into the lazarette. This is down underneath the aft cockpit. You've got another access, you can see it there. So you've got direct access into here. This is normally full of toys, you know, sort of wetsuits and paddle boards and all that kind of stuff. We'll be taken out for the boat show. There's another generator in here, smaller one, but it means you can operate everything from there in the event of the main one going down you can see the air conditioning systems over here steering gear is here now there is obviously the usual hydraulic steering from the wheel there's also a uh, steering pump from the autopilot and then beyond that there's a second autopilot with its own second in fact i think these are them here but its own second steering pump so again total redundancy the autopilot goes down or the pump goes down you can just switch it over and carry on and you can see all the battery switches across there as well this is what these boats are all about really when you come down here you really get it these are camera systems you can monitor the entire boat from the helm but yeah it's all about going out and staying out and that's what these guys do you've got hatches in the floor so you can drop directly into here from the saloon area and in fact you can even get the engine out and through by taking these cross beams out you can see how they bolt into place so in an absolute worst case scenario you can actually get these engines up and out and through that way without having to start seriously dismantling the boat fuel tanks are here on each side there's also uh, a day tank and i think there are two further wing tanks further forward as well if i remember correctly and these have sight gauges on them again if you're not sure about your fuel gauges you're a bit concerned about your levels you can come down here and you can see exactly what they are you can see another one on that tank over there those are the two main tanks if we look in here that is access to the stabilization the fin stabilizing systems and again as i say you can do all the hydraulic work to those as well brilliant okay <laughs> that's always one of my favorite areas on here but there's lots more to show you we'll head on up this is back up to the main deck this is where we came on through the saloon past the galley we went forward initially this time we're going to go up here i would mention this door again this side door only because we'll go past it and i just want to show you where that routes out to on the outside now up here there's a crew cabin this boat is run by a crew it's a couple and they live here and in fact they've been living here for two years so they have this area in here as their cabin And they have this area here as their heads. Of course, this also works as the day heads for this level. There's a shower tucked in behind here. And then if we head on forward, seating area up here, this is really nice. Apart from giving you a separate zone on the boat, it also means that you've got um, somewhere where people can come and enjoy the ride when the boat's underway and see it being operated. Um, it just gives you another space on the boat, really, doesn't it? I think that's a nice thing to have. A couple of serious stid helm seats again if doing serious passage making that's pretty important if we come around here i'll show you a couple of things along here this is all the camera system so you can actually monitor the one i pointed out to you is down in the engine room i think it is it was facing forward wasn't it i think it's that's facing backwards i think it's that possibly that one there i'm not so no it's that one because it's facing forward so that's the one i pointed out to you but also there's a night vision camera on here if i push that there we go <laughs> that's using i think it's infrared and that gives you full night vision and you can pan and zoom with this um which is rather impressive so at night when you're running 
you can actually get that night vision. We've got radars here and you can set this to have two different distances. We're on one mile and 0.25 mile. In fact, on this radar system, that wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, I've lost it now, but <laughs> you can run that right up to 64 miles with accuracy, and in fact you can take it right out with a little bit less accuracy to 120 miles. Serious radar system on this yacht. Um, navigation is here, we've got communications here as well. This is the bow and the stern thruster controls for the hydraulic thrusters. This is the engine control, and this, as I mentioned, is electronic, so it's, it's finger light, and it uses electronics to send the signal back down to the main engine. But that wing engine that I spoke to you about uses these, and these are cable controls, this is what I'm talking about. So, you know, a little bit heavier to operate, but it doesn't matter. What it means is that you know that's always going to work. What else have we got here that's worth telling you about? Autopilot, there's the autopilot is over here. That backup autopilot I mentioned is here. So it's not just the pumps that backed up, the whole head unit, everything is a completely separate backup. The track stabilization is controlled from here. Engine controls, so the main engine and the wing engine are switched and controlled from here. We've got fire systems that you can see from here and operate from here. All very, very impressive. Lovely. OK, let's press on a bit further. Plenty to see with these, isn't there? Chart table over here. So you keep all your charts and navigation kit and so forth in there for your practical paper navigation. And we've got this side, you've got these um, like stable doors. You can just open the top one for ventilation or you can open the entire thing. And what we'll do is we'll loop backwards first of all. You see they put this bimini on here so you get shade all the way around. You've got this lovely little seating area at the back of the boat. That's a nice place to be because it's quite sheltered. So when the boat's running, of course, you're out of the wind, but also when you're at anchor, the boat will always swing head to wind because the wind is blowing it down. So again, a very nice sheltered place to be with a great view out across the water, or today across the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, but you get the idea. We've got life raft here. We've got access here up to get to the mast. So for maintenance, that sort of stuff, you can get up there onto the top. It's not a normal area, otherwise that's just a maintenance area. Another door on the outside. So that's bringing you out from the, uh, from the wheelhouse again. <laughs> a door on the outside, that's where you usually keep them, isn't it? And then here we've got wing station. So the yacht can be controlled from here. If you're berthing in a place like this, of course, that is extremely helpful. So bow and stern thruster controls, engine controls, and the steering control, I think, is via the Simrad Autopilot. Although you probably wouldn't use that very much. You normally tend to use it mostly on the thrusters of the engine. This is interesting. There's a massive space in behind this Portuguese bridge for warps and other stuff like that. Again, it all speaks to the practicality. And then the door here takes us out onto the boat deck. There's shore power inlets here, and I mentioned that because there's shore power inlets at the stern of the boat as well. So depending on where you're berthing, you don't need to be running cables down the full length of the boat. You can, if you bow into somewhere, you can just run cables up like this and in. If you're stern in, then the, uh, the inlet is at the back. And the cable is at the back. You don't need to run it up to here. You can just plug it in at the stern of the boat. This one's got a Williams Sportjet 400 tender up here on the boat deck. The crane there is to lift it on and off. Again, we go back to the sort of family values of this boat. This is a little sailing boat. It's unsinkable. It would actually double as a backup life raft. Obviously, <laughs> it's serious redundancy when you're backing up the life raft, isn't it? But mainly it's a toy. It's the kids to play in, sail around the anchorage, that sort of thing. These are a lot of fun. It's like bobbing around on a little cork. But yeah, that's your serious sort of ship to shore boat or off exploring or indeed water sports, you know, water skiing towing ringos that sort of stuff a lot of fun can be had with that that is the crane that lifts them on and off and then we come right up to the front we've got the anchor windlass here of course a big substantial anchor on the front that's access down to the chain locker these are the hatches that we saw over that forward cabin that's what gets you the light and the ventilation down into those areas and that is how she looks from here that is a chunk of boat, isn't it? Now you can see up on the top now the antennas and the radar and the, uh, the FLIR camera that I showed you is the one... I uh, can't quite see it because the sun's in my eyes. It's about there, up on the top. And, um, and the little 
thing that looks like a, a, an upturned sort of broomstick is a lightning conductor right on the very top there. Okay, we can come back from here and this will take us back down to the main deck and that door that I pointed out is this one here. So that's back into pretty much where the galley area is. We can come back down here, you've got these big cleats about the place, so spring cleats, this of course all drains. Door on the sides for alongside the dock, you can step straight on and off. And then finally, this brings us all the way back to the cockpit. And that, my friends, concludes my tour of what I think you'll agree is a pretty serious offshore cruising machine. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Always a pleasure to bring you guys a Nordhaven and I know you enjoy them. So I'll be very interested to hear what your comments are on this one. I want to say massive thanks to Nordhaven themselves. They organised this tour for me, kept the boat closed off in the middle of a boat show so we could give you guys a proper look at it. I'll put a link to those guys in the description as ever. Huge thanks to you all for watching and we we'll look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.